Hi everyone, this is Dan Swan from Stardino, StartupAcademy.org. I'm going to talk to you today about co-working and regional innovation. Um, we've had a lot of experience over the last few years, um, so let me uh, rip straight into it. Um, actually, before I, like, before I do that, I'd like to thank Bianca and the CAP team for um, helping us out and inviting me here today. They've been very um, resourceful, relentlessly, which I like, um, in helping us out. So uh, a big thanks to you guys and all the CAP members. Okay, so um, let's just uh, kind of talk about Stardino and uh, who we are and where we are. Um, so what is the Stardino? What are we? Um, we originally started and came up with a name of Stardino simply because of we wanted to combine startups and innovation, but, but be very specific about it. So we're based in uh, a regional town, a seaside surf town um, that has a lot of synergies with um, Bali uh, and Ubud, which is the uh, headquarters for for CAP. Um, but you know, anyone travelling around Southeast Asia, you know, usually. Australia and Byron Bay are on the map. So we're a little seaside surf town, probably of about, I don't know, maybe 300, sorry, 30,000 uh, people. So very, very small. I originally was uh, based in Sydney for 10 years, uh, so I had a lot of experience working in cities. So decided that we bring a lot of um, what I learnt from um, the startup scene, in particularly Sydney, uh, over to Australia. So we're about 45 members. Um, currently in our co-working space. Um, we were also, we wanted to stand out and we didn't want to just rely on co-working because I keep think co-working, the way it's evolving, um, certainly when I was last at, at the uh, CU Asia conference a couple of years ago, you know, the industry has already started to mature. So, you know, there's a lot of real estate players and, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it can be seen seemed to be a lot about putting bums on seats. So we wanted to stand out and be a little bit different and have a thing. Um, in the cities, um, you, co-working tries to do this by being established as, I don't know, a fintech hub or a creative hub. Um, in regions, we can't be that specific. Setting up a fintech hub in a regional town usually doesn't make much, se make much, sen make much sense. But we um, really wanted to re build an ecosystem. When we first came here, there was no other co-working spaces. There'd been um, one that had come and gone, uh, but I'm pleased to see, say now that there's another one in town, um, which is great, which is more aimed at uh, uh, creatives and another one just, just outside in another um, neighboring town. Okay, so, you know, it was very clear to me and based on my knowledge and background and experience that we wanted to build an ecosystem. Byron Bay is, even though it's a small town, it, it, it sort of punches above its weight in terms of we've got the highest density of um, creative industries outside of, you know, our two major cities being Sydney and Melbourne. Um, so even a lot of the other regional centres, um, uh, you know, we've got some amazing you know, literally rock stars here. Uh, if you've heard of those brownstone and wood beer, um, spell designs, probably bigger than Assassin Bride in Australia. There's a whole list of them. So, um, but there wasn't necessarily any connective tissue. There wasn't any co-working, which is obviously deeply important. But we also wanted to really look at, um, you know, running some of our incubator and accelerator courses. So we started off in year one, really looking at um, those two things, establishing co-working and establishing our incubator and accelerator programs. So after the first year, we actually um, ran in partnership with uh, a local uh, creative media institute, um, SAE, uh, that was actually founded here and has grown to become a, an international business. It's probably the closest, closest thing to a, to a corporate that we have in our regional town. So um, we partnered with them and really wanted to inspire you know, young people into action, and we created something called Stardom Academy Byron Bay, which when we first launched it, it was a number of things. It was one, um, uh, a way to build a captive audience region, regionally and talk about innovation specifically, so in the form of an innovation forum and bring some of the local 
guys that we have here. Um, Rick Richardson, uh, in particular, is noteworthy. He, you know, invented uh, and painted um, a lot of the uh, what we all use every day, the Microsoft install stuff. Um, he got into a patent infringement with them and ended up suing, suing them for um, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, initially, he got sued back. Um, but anyway, it's a big, great um, David and Goliath story. So he was a su supporter along with uh, quite a few others. So um, we ran Startup Academy four times. There's also a way that uh, the guys who graduated, the teams that graduated from our, in particular, Accelerator program could pitch their ideas, pitch their business um, to real live local investors. And we had a panel of four of them. So, you know, very typical, um, very similar to um, Dragon's Den, I suppose, but more of a kind of a dolphin tank than a shark tank. Uh, and that was very successful. We ran four of those in um, four batches. Um, batch four ended the end of beginning of this year. Um, I'm pleased to say that last year we also, you know, had our first investment event where we actually connected um, one of the companies, one of the teams to um, an investor. So they actually got some real cash, which was pretty amazing. So, you know, we helped someone jump off a waterfall, which we thought was, which gave us some enormous pride and uh, a lot of, uh, I suppose, kudos in the community. Um, so in that two years, I thought it would be worth just summarizing what did we learn about, um, I guess, not only running a co-working space regionally, but more about regional innovation, which is something that, you know, that drove us and made us, you know, kind of deeply passionate about. Um, it took us two years, pretty much, to have our first um, full day. Um, I wouldn't say that we ever went backwards, um, but we also didn't grow exponentially. We did, we grow, you know, pretty much steady, steadily, uh, instead of like that. And that was fine because, you know, we we were very careful about curating our community, and we weren't too obsessed with just putting um, bums on seats. We wanted to build the community first and have, you know, a very nurturing environment. Um, as I mentioned, in the first year, we had um, four batches, each of five, so that was 20 accelerators. But the thing that really uh, stood out more than anything was that um, we only had two incubators during that time. And it may be because we, you know, we didn't necessarily have our messaging really spot on. Um, but I think, you know, as I, as I mentioned in the, one of the advantages down here, um, you know, certainly with the accelerator program, that was more focused on helping existing businesses grow and therefore, you know, there's a more natural pathway to connecting them with investors, um, which I'll come on to in a second. Um, so, and also in, in year two, so after year one, we really kind of, you know, in the, in the spirit of eco um, system building, we became a little bit concerned that, you know, we're too focused on the accelerators. Well, that's, you know, the sexier end of town and, you know, certainly, you know, providing deal, deal flow for investment is kind of pretty um, cool and, you know, um, venture capital and seed capital, it's all great. Um, but it isn't necessarily the, the right thing. In fact, one of the rock stars that I mentioned was actually Flowhive, and we, I'm pleased to say that you know, outside of North America, we, we actually had the largest crowdfunding um, campaign outside the US uh, to the tune of, I think, uh, uh, 15 million US. So that was pretty outstanding. So, you know, uh, investment isn't necessarily always the way to go. So, um, we, you know, we, we, we changed things around a little bit this year. We kind of went, right, well, instead of running everything on batches um, in sync and, you know, having incubators and accelerators at the same time, why don't we just close the doors on the, on the, on the batches for now and just focus on one being a little bit more um, qualitative, I suppose, uh, and just leave it perpetually open so anyone can come along at any moment in time and not be constrained by batches or pitching times and those kind of things and just simply focused on getting, you know, their ideas up and running. Um, and I'm pleased to say, you know, already we've had 12 of those running through without any, you know, that's all happened from um, organic stuff. We've not yet completed the year since we've done it. So, you know, that's already, um, you know, created some really good grassroots um, launching of ideas. So, um, you know, I think I summed it up pretty well um, from the point of view of things that we learned. One was 
keep nurturing the ecosystem, to don't be lured too much by um, you know the bright shiny object of mentors. One of the big problems I, um, that we uncovered was the matchmaking. So although we had these you know outstanding local investors, um, we th found that for example there's a lot of um, missing gaps in terms of being sector specific. And what I mean by that is um, it's a it's a it's a general innovation problem. Um, if you're working on a project, let's say, that combines fashion with the Internet of Things because they're the two things that you, they're the two sectors that you're um, looking to integrate and innovate in. Um, if you pitch and none of those guys really, you know, you might do a great pitch and, you know, have a um, fantastic, you know, hockey stick and looks like the next unicorn and all those kind of things. Um, but unless they kind of really get and understand your area, um, then they're not necessarily going to, you know, buy into your idea or buy into that space or necessarily see the opportunity. And so we uncovered that problem specifically, but we also think that that's the same issue whether you're doing a shark tank or a um, dragon's den, you know, um, anywhere in the world, even in the even in the major hubs, even in Sydney or um, Jakarta or wherever. So. Um, and that really kind of resonated with me from the point of view is actually an innovation problem. The fact that we're pushing the boundaries that we're playing in the you know the top five percent of um, uh, a, a particular space that we're trying to disrupt, then we're always going to have a problem of actually reaching, connecting with the right people. Um, we may get one or two, but you know certainly on the investment side of things, it can be a little bit um, uh, of a dis disadvantage. So the other disadvantage or advantage that we, you know, uncovered was um, the difference of being in a tech hub and a non-tech hub. Now, my background is fully tech. Um, I was very lucky. I managed to sell a company to Oracle back in 2002, which then was the second largest tech firm in the world. It's like selling it to Oracle or, um, sorry, like to Apple or Google today, I suppose, depending on who, 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 you're, who you're picking. Um, so... Um, so my background was tech, and it was very interesting that you know a lot of the um, you know, we had a few apps and a few kind of um, uh, you know share economy style things, um, but a lot of it was kind of people using tech and actually then applying that into a different space, like you know fashion meets the Internet of Things, or um, agri agri tech, or you know those kind of areas. Very very diverse in regions. Um, we don't necessarily have the the joy of, of having you know specific sectors that we um, apply our trade to, and that was very interesting. So you know all startups need some form of tech, whether they're a tech business. You know that was um, you know that was a key insight. So you know that brought us back really kind of full circle and you know um, to to our own you know ideas and where we started and what startups and innovation really looked like. And we really liked and enjoyed the space and our key mantra, which we began with, which was just start. Um, activating communities, activating ecosystems, I think from a grassroots level um, is deeply important and shouldn't be underestimated. Um, so with, with that in mind, we, we decided to take Startup Academy from being um, just simply a pitching event that we ran um, four or five times um, to actually uh, an online platform. We wanted to reach and connect those, I won't necessarily read them out, you know, the startups with mentors or, you know, enabling hubs to really, um, you know, pull in um, specific coaches or investors, um, but also working with other educators as well. Um, certainly if in the, you know, the open innovation, quadruple, triple helix um, paradigm that most of the governments are subscribing to, we need to um, help those big educational institutions as much as possible. And, you know, whether you've got a local college or a local university, um, we certainly have quite a few um, working with those guys because they're struggling just like any other large organization. They're being disrupted um, and actually very much struggle to provide the necessary pathways to um, nurture those ideas of you know, potentially students um, uh, into the startup world. So, you know, we've worked very hard to um, partner with, with those kind of guys. 
So, you know, this is the general space that we're trying to play in startups, mentors, coaches, hubs, investors, educators. We want to connect all of those things. So that's our, um, I guess, starting idea. So um, the overall platform is to be, you know, an, uh, an online um, network, an online incubator and accelerator that connects those startups with mentors and investors. For investors, it gives them deal flow. With startups, it gives them resources and more people to hang with. Um, so we really, um, you know, really focus on that. And what we've done with um, Startup Academies began, um, you know, not only with our incubator and accelerator programs, um, but we've also tried to really nurture that just start, that activation in the community. So um, what we've tagged on, and this is actually a, um, a real methodology, um, it's called the DIA, Discovery Incubation Acceleration Model, is really look at activating in our communities those people with ideas. So we want to take them on a three simple three-step um, process where we can actually um, go from just having a, an idea to very, very quickly bootstrapping a startup. Now, we've all done, I suppose, um, startup weekends. We've run the first one in our region. I've helped out with um, other startup weekends as a mentor for around Australia. Um, and they're fantastic and, you know, they're absolutely marvellous things. But if you're not necessarily, again, a large tech hub, you don't need, you don't necessarily have those resources to keep, you know, running startup weekends. They're pretty exhausting um, and they're pretty time consuming and they can also be expensive and as well as a lot of the knowledge flows you don't necessarily retain inside your community or inside your hub. So um, what we're trying to do is, I guess, a number of things. One is actually complement and provide additional resources to anyone who's participating in a startup weekend and as part of Global Entrepreneurship Week um, on the, from the 18th to the 20th, which is now called, um, that weekend's now called Global Startup Weekend, um, you can also use our resources. But more importantly, we wanna really appeal to those people who can't necessarily get um, to a startup weekend or can't necessarily run uh, a startup weekend, those hubs that, you know, just don't have the time resources to focus their attention because they're just so busy running their, um, running their hubs and building their communities. That's deeply important to us. Um, so we're doing that um, uh, free for part of Global Entrepreneurship Week, the discovery event. Um, I'll run our little pitch here and, and I'll disappear. Um, uh, our our um, what am I trying to say? The uh, the discovery event um, will be free and open to anyone. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyone, anywhere is our motto. So we really want to try and connect um, those regional areas with um, uh, with the world's best um, speakers and mentors. We do have a, an extraordinary lineup already. We've got people like Adam Chair, who's a co-founder of Siri. Um, more locally, um, Elliot Chappie, Chappell, who run, runs Possible, a crowdfunding platform. All of our guys are amazing speakers, um, and there's 16, 16 of them from all the way around the world. So I'll run our little pitch here. Um, I'm going to be available uh, after this webinar live online. I'm just pre-recording this to make sure that um, it all works and we've got enough time to really um, work with you guys and answer any questions. Um, questions. So here's my quick pitch. Hopefully it'll play. Starting a business can be really easy. All you have to do is surround yourself with other people living and building their dreams. That's what we've done at Startup Academy. In three simple steps, go from idea to startup. During Global Entrepreneurship Week, on the 18th of November, our three-day discovery program will be free and fully online. Sign up today and just start.